It is Wednesday, August 16th, and the Give and Go Show is back in your life. My name is Griffin Queen, and as always, I'm joined by Matt Ferentinos. Matt Ferentinos is the only person that I can say as always for, because this week, not only are we missing uh, Matt Modi, because he is jet-setting around the country, I think he, he might be up north right now, we are also missing super producer Elliot Chiatani. So it is just going to be the two of us this week, Ferentinos. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you not bailing on me. This would be really sad if it was just me today. Hey, it's the OG Give and Go show. You know I love some uh, taking it it's back. True. Get a little, uh, get to reminisce, get some of that, you know, old school feeling that we had. I'm excited to talk hoops. Did a lot of research before this. I know we don't have much going on in basketball. I was actually trying to find stuff to study on. And like Zach Lowe is on vacation. Like, I don't think there's sure. any basketball podcasts right now that are doing anything. So, hey. Cheers to us. We got stuff to talk about. Cheers to us, man. Yeah, I mean, like, if people are going to tune in, this is the time to do it because there's there's literally nothing going on in the world of basketball. Obviously, FIBA starts in about 10 days, or nine days, I guess, at this point. Starts on the 25th. Um, but right now, it's, you know, scrimmages. It's friendlies between a couple different international teams. Um, obviously, we have the James Harden situation that we're going to get into a little bit. I also, yeah, I see you wearing your Brooklyn James Harden. Is that is that James Harden or it is, is that? The, it is the James Harden jersey. Oh, I I both love and hate that for you. I don't that's, have a Kyrie jersey. Come on, man, my third eye. Good, well, look, good. man, I I I know how you feel about uh, members of uh, the Jewish tribe, so I wasn't sure. <laughs> Just kidding. For anyone who could potentially be listening to this in the future, Ferentinos is a longtime friend of the tribe. Of course, um, your bar mitzvah. That's true. Uh, I did underdress. God, we're, what are, that wasn't that wasn't my fault. It's what I was told. I'll blame my father for that one. What are but. we're we're thirty one, right? Yeah, we're thirty one. So that was eighteen years ago. That was literally an adult lifetime ago. You've been a man for eighteen years, so that makes. I've sense. been a man for eighteen <laughs> years, so now I'm a man a couple times over. Um, I think I don't know if that's how it works. It probably doesn't work like that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's let's just get into it. Um, before we actually do get going, though, just a reminder to anybody who is watching us on YouTube, click the like button, comment below if you have any questions. Make sure you have subscribed if you have not already. Uh, we've had shorts going up on YouTube. We've had IG reels going up on Instagram. We've had TikToks going up on TikTok. You can follow us on all those platforms. I'm going to throw it up on the screen. So if you are watching us on YouTube, you can find all of those different channels. Uh, pretty easy to find, very searchable. If you are listening to us on an audio platform, whether it's Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, actually, I think Stitcher's not a platform anymore, so ignore that one. Anything. Uh, Amazon Podcasts, I think, is a new one. If, if you're following us on any of those platforms, if you're listening to us there, make sure you click the follow button. Make sure you rate and review. That's it. That's the entire thing. I know I'm going through this very fast. This is not great audio. So we're just going to get into it, and we're going to talk about Cooper Flag. We're going to talk about James Harden. We're going to talk about the Sixers a little bit because Modi is not here to be uh, depressed <laughs> about shit. it. <laughs> yeah, look, I mean, how often do we get to talk shit, you know? Uh, we, we try and – I don't know. I don't know if you do this. I try and do this when, when I'm talking to you guys. I try and be a little bit softer in my takes as it comes to both the Nets for you and the Sixers for him when we're talking about it. I mean, I was rooting for but the Nuggets I'm, hard in the Western Conference Finals, sure. but I wanted the Lakers to do well when I was with you. You know, it's like sure, it's not sure. fun if, you know, the Nuggets had a blowout. Like, it's fun to have yeah. a good game. It's nice to see how and I, I do remember you rooting for the Lakers to show out, and I remember you being bummed on my behalf when the Lakers lost. Although, like we've talked about a million times, if you're going to lose, granted it was a sweep, that was one of the most competitive sweeps we've ever seen, much like – the Nets Celtics, Celtics sweep that we saw a few years ago. Yeah, and uh, that was the LeBron game. That was the one where, like, no one on the Lakers could do anything, and LeBron had, like, 25 or something in the first half. 31? Yeah, 31, 31 in the first half? Yeah, yeah, so I was downplaying it. But, yeah, he was, like, I think he finished with, like, 38, though. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that was all that man had in the tank was that first half. I mean – it's hard to take over when you're doing that all season. I mean, I think AD is to be the one to take over in that spot, but we've talked enough about that Western Conference Finals. We have. But we have. Speaking over to um, the Eastern, well, not Conference Finals because the Sixers don't make it that far, but <laughs> I do tough, think it's interesting. 
I think it's interesting that the Sixers are like blowing up in the Harden situation because let's go back to last year when he signed. He was like taking a team friendly deal in the hopes of like basically signing a supermax, right? So the whole thing is that maybe Maury's not offering that to him, which is why he's saying he's lying and all this stuff. Cause I think that's why he took less money last year to see like team friendly because he was gonna get a supermax from Maury. It's like a wink wink nudge nudge thing. Right. So I mean, that was my understanding of it, right? I think that was everyone's understanding of it was not only is he signing this deal, and I think I think he signed, what, $11 million under what he could have signed for. Mm. So not only did he give $11 million ostensibly back to the Sixers to sign two other players, but it was with, I thought, and I think most people thought, the agreement that, hey, once we get to the next year of this deal, once I have an option to, to I'm going to take, I'm going to opt into my player option for 36 million or whatever it might be. And then when I am a free agent, you are going to re-sign me to whatever the Supermax is uh, because this is my last chance at a Supermax because after this, he's going to be toast his age 35 season. Mm -hmm. I don't think you're eligible for the Supermax after that point because there's a lot of weirdness uh, if you're like a certain age in the NBA. I think it has something to do with with Chris Paul. I feel like he'd want to extend it as much as possible though. (laughs) Well, I think I think obviously your minimum changes. Like Chris Paul's mm. minimum deal is larger than it would be um, for a younger player, but I think the max that he can sign is also lower because there's just so much greater risk of injury. I, and I could be wrong yeah. about this. I just remember reading something about this at one point. Mm. But now it feels like someone is reneging on this agreement, and I I, I don't know if it's Daryl Morey. I don't know if it's the Sixers ownership. I don't know if there was some sort of backroom deal. We were talking about this with Modi over text earlier. Some sort of backroom deal with uh, the owner of Fanatics, who, mm-hmm. th- who like everyone knows, has a relationship with the Sixers and with their players. And he had Embiid and Tobias Harris and James Harden all at that white party that he threw. There's just so much weirdness about this where it feels like the NBA is about to be very angry at the Sixers because I feel like there's a house of cards that's about to implode. And it's probably going to affect other teams, because if the Sixers are doing it, there's no reason to suspect other teams are not also doing it. Yeah. And, I mean, it's, it's kind, it is interesting, because I feel like the front office is definitely to blame here. But, I mean, James Harden has been saying promises to a lot of teams, too. You have to remember that the players are also responsible for their actions. He didn't have to go over there. He signed what was on the contract. When I uh, got the gracious offer to work remotely, my dad was like, make sure you get that shit in writing because you don't want them to come back and say, nope, we're going to yank you back home. Like, make sure you have it in contract. So he signed what he signed. And I think you kind of have to take on some responsibility when you left it. The Nets were going to pay him a super max. It was offered after Kevin Durant signed his four-year deal that James Harden was going to get it and turned it down. So, I mean, it is interesting Harden's comments are pretty wild. Uh, selling bottles of wine in China. This is not a James Harden original. This is a job. It's but. not. It has your brother's <laughs> name on it. Did your brother get- <laughs> sell bottles of wine? Uh, the Josh brand is pretty good. It's like twelve, you know, twelve to fifteen dollars a bottle. But okay, wine is wine. I don't. I look. I'll tell you. I'm not a wine guy. Uh, I can only have wine that doesn't have what is it like sulfates or whatever in it. Okay. Something like that, sulfites, sulfites. Otherwise, I get a mad headache. I'm a soft ass little, whatever. Uh, but look, I'm I'm glad you got some wine named after your brother. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, he he sold what ten thousand bottles in five minutes. That's yeah, pretty, that's that's pretty baller. Like, man should have man should have brought more bottles of wine. That shit would have sold out quick. Yeah, clearly. I mean, he could he can completely leave the NBA money on the table. It's it's. I mean, look, we've seen this from a ton of dudes. Celebrity liquors and wines, it, it, like if you're George a big Clinton. enough celebrity, that's where the money. Uh, Ryan Reynolds and his aviation gin. Oh yeah, I gotta try. But he that. sold that shit for like a billion dollars. Damn, I think I'm pretty Antonio sure Ryan Banderas Reynolds is, a, is has like a tequila too or something. Like I could see that. I um, think uh, the Always Sunny guys had a. Uh, I, I don't know if it's a tequila or a gin or what, but they had one come out during COVID that they used the funds from for like COVID relief. They should have a rum um, flavored rum. You know who, you know who else has uh, alcohol that does really terribly? 
uh, LeBron James. <laughs> no, I'm sure if LeBron has one, it probably does really great. <laughs> he he, loves that, man, wine. that man is mad famous. <laughs> uh, do you know who Brendan Schaub is? Uh, name sounds very familiar. He was on the Ultimate Fighter, the season that Rashad coached against Rampage. It was like that heavyweight season with Kimbo Slice. Okay. And he was the runner up on that. He became a UFC fighter. He fought in the UFC for a bunch of years. He ended up leaving the UFC because Joe, you might remember this clip. Joe Rogan had a talk with him on his podcast where he was like, dude, you need to, re you need to retire. Like, you're getting knocked out too often. Uh, and I think he, he asked him at one point, he was like, how do you think you'd do uh, against um, Cain Velasquez? Mm -hmm. And Brendan Schaub goes, I, I think I do pretty well. I think you'd be surprised. And Joe Rogan goes, I think you'd be surprised. I think he'd fuck you up. And this is oh like, this God. is his boy. These guys are <laughs> friends. And so this is this is like years and years ago, right? I'm uh, just going to get into this for a second. Back then, people like kind of liked Brendan Schaub. Like he was, he had a podcast with Brian Callen. He was kind of on top of the podcasting world. He had all these, he was, he was doing stand-up. He was touring. He was doing all this shit. And now Brendan Schaub might be the most hated guy on the internet. Um... I know you're a big you're a big Reddit guy. Yeah. If you go on the Fighter and the Kids subreddit, and if you want to just like spend like two weeks catching up on the entire saga about this dude <laughs> and about Brian Callen and about Chris D'Elia, whose name you probably recognize, ah, yes. and like all these Predator. awful people that work together, I say all of this to say <laughs> that Brendan Schaub has a whiskey brand called Tiger Thick. Because he's trying to make his whole brand thick with three C's because he's a stupid idiot. Ugh. And it does it like it apparently it tastes like, like dog shit. It doesn't <laughs> sell. Like people are always posting pictures of the bottles in stores like covered in dust. Like <laughs> it's 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 a really great community. And it honestly might be the funniest subreddit, like on the entirety of Reddit. Like every it, it's growing really fast. I've been on it for a couple years now. It's like up to like a couple hundred thousand people, but it used to be like 15k of us for a really long time check it out i'm done talking about uh <laughs> celebrity celebrity alcohol i know we wanted to talk about the nba um but back to the james harden stuff i mean where do you think it all goes from here what's what's james harden's next step forward and i know at some point we're going to talk about like what could he do to fuck with the sixers <laughs> but like what do you what do you think is happening next um, I think he gone. I think he wants to go to the Clippers. Um, we'll see if that happens. But I mean, I've seen this saga before from the Nets. And when you're reading stuff about things imploding, it's going to implode. That's what I know. If like Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving or James Harden are involved. I think all three of them are equally as bad as like trying to lead teams being locker room cancers when they don't go well. I mean, Harden literally on Reddit, there's a quote of him saying like, it's very <laughs> reminiscent of our the tone of our group chat. Whatever profession you are trying to be the best at, you're going to go through some tough times. You're going to go through some days where you feel like you don't want to do it anymore. Well, <laughs> the end of it is those days uh, make you tough, and it makes the top of the mountain much better. But he did not try reaching the top of the mountain for his last few franchises. He just kind of gave up when things got tough. So as far as the Sixers go... I mean, I think they'd be able to flip Harden for some decent assets. I don't think they'd be able to do it uh, as much as the Nets got. And I'm saying that still with Ben Simmons, like sucking and not really playing that well. So you're going to flip Harden again for a little less of a return. Probably like, I mean, didn't uh, Maury quoted say like he wants a bona fide superstar for James Harden, yep. which I just don't think that's going to happen. Um, I think... Embiid, I mean, I've seen like he removed the process from his Instagram handle and stuff like that. So, I mean, like I could see him demanding a trade too. Um, he's pretty like outspoken and kind of wears his heart on his sleeve. So I could see him demanding a trade, but I don't know. I think it's going to implode. Um, maybe the Sixers can do like a Nets rebuild, try to get some assets, some young players. Um, at the end of the episode, I was going to talk those FIBA exhibitions because Mikael Bridges and Cam Johnson were killing it. Um, so it might be worth kind of taking a step back, developing a younger player like Maxi and some of their young talent in Philadelphia. But yeah, I think their championship window, if they had it, is closed. I think Harden's gone and Embiid's going to be shaky, which is nuts because he was the MVP. Things look great coming into the playoffs and then it just imploded. One bad postseason is all it took for this guy to get tired and want to leave.
Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to look it up after this episode because I don't I don't without Elliot to look it up for us. You know, I I'm curious what the quickest someone has been traded after an MVP season. I would guess Russ and Harden are both very close to the top of that mm-hmm. because I think Russ I think they were both traded two years after their MVP seasons. Because Kawhi signed for the Raptors, he didn't get traded, right? Like he was just a free agent, and he signed there. Well, Kawhi hasn't won MVP. That's true. He got second, I think, second or third one of those years. I think he got second the the Harden year, if I remember correctly. But I, I could be wrong about that. And he's never um, going to qualify for the MVP. He's never going to qualify. <laughs> I mean, that those were obviously his prime Just years. Played, yeah. Um, and you know, that kind of is what it is. I mean. We we know the, the book is out on Kawhi as, as much as I love him as a player. Um yeah, I mean honestly, I like I know you mentioned the Clippers and you mentioned that Maury wants either a like bona fide superstar back or he wants a series of young players or he wants a lot of draft capital. I think that's what I saw. Like those are the three different options or some sort of like combination of those options. I don't I don't know how the Clippers make that work unless the guy that they are sending back is Paul George, Paul George or yeah. is is Kawhi Leonard like th- that's the only way they make that work. They don't really have young assets that they can flip that are like the kind of young assets you want and they're completely bare on picks. They've got nothing left. Like this is yeah. one of the most win now teams we've ever seen. And I don't know if do, do, I mean maybe James Harden makes the Clippers better. I guess because you could argue that Kawhi and PG kind of have redundant skill sets and they both kind of have some of the same injury issues. Harden's more of a obviously, creator. Yeah. And like PG, a decent creator for his position, Kawhi, decent creator for his position. But I wouldn't say for either of those guys, it's like something they're known for. They're like four to five assists per game guys. And that's only because of their usage rate. It's not because they're, pass first guys so like there's an argument you can make that Kawhi might thrive next to a guy next like Harden but 2023 Harden and 2023 Kawhi like I don't know I don't I just don't know if I see it to his credit Harden did win two games like the two games that they won in the second round those were all Harden wins which is kind of nuts because I knew that he still had some left in the uh tank because like it was just hard for him to constantly get injured, minor injuries to really get back into full shape. Like I was watching uh, some James Harden highlights to just prepare for tonight's episode. And man, those like <laughs> Houston Rocket years, like he was unstoppable. He was just carrying those Rockets teams to like 55, 60 wins in a very good yeah. competitive West and had like so many game winners. Is just a really high usage player that can dominate and literally run an offense by himself. Sucks that he's a free throw merchant because it makes some of those games just unwatchable. Like highlights are fun, but during the game they're pretty brutal to watch him just shoot like twenty free throws. Um, but yeah, I I think it's kind of crazy. Like Embiid has never risen to the challenge, so I'm curious if the Sixers try to still find another combination of around him that can work. Um, he is the MVP. I feel like you want to keep him around, but. I don't really know where it's going to go from here. I mean, Lillard hasn't been moved yet, so I think a lot of trades are still waiting to happen and big moves in the NBA before the season starts. But I'm curious, like, who would want to be a buyer besides the Clippers for Harden? Like, the Rockets were floated before the season, which I could see him finding his way back there. The Rockets are kind of flooded with talent, so it does make sense if they want to, I guess, instantly rise their win t- or raise their win total and their ceiling and try to make it to the playoffs. But I don't sure. think James Harden in a young cast is – it's not like James Harden, you know, five, six years ago. It's James Harden now. So Right. Sure. If this was if this was 2019 James Harden, 2018, 2017, Oh, with this Rockets If this score? was the majority of the 2010s, every single team in the league is willing to make this agreement. Even knowing his playoff struggles, anyone would trade all but LeBron James and a couple other guys for a James Harden who wants to come to their team. But we're talking about a James Harden coming off of two hamstring injuries, coming off of a playoff run where he looked highly inconsistent would be, I think, probably the nice way to put it, where he's either dropping 40 or he's dropping 17. He has a couple games where he's in the single digits. You know, do I think he gets enough credit for the fact that, like you said, he straight up won them two of the three games that they won? No, I don't think he does. 
I think he should not be the recipient of the majority of the blame for what happened in that playoff series. But that's neither here nor there. That part doesn't matter anymore because it's already over. Now it's about what is he going to do for you going forward? And he's not going to get better. So if you're trading for a guy who has one year left on his deal and he wants a super max, or I guess a max if once he gets traded, the question doesn't become, is he going to win us a game this year in the playoffs? It's how much is this going to hamstring us for the next five years? And the Clippers are, are like, they're the only ones I could see doing it just because they're already hamstrung for the next five years. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they might just be like, fuck it. This is our, this is our window. I cannot think of a single other team that this makes sense for. I mean, there's a version of the Lakers where I guess they want to do this, where they don't sign any of the contracts that they have this past off season. Like yeah. they don't resign Rui and they don't resign Austin Reeves and they don't do all that. And they've got a lot of money to play with, but we saw what happened with Westbrook. And I think they've learned from that experience, knowing that it's the worst possible choice. Mm -hmm. So and Reeves I looks think good Arden, on that FIBA team. he looks incredible. Like he gets he's a lot a of very good time. player. And that's a good team. Like they're stacked and he gets a lot of playing time. There's going to be a lot of people that come around on him, kind of the same way that people came around on Alex Caruso once he wasn't on the Lakers anymore, and Kuzma to some degree once he wasn't on the Lakers, and Brandon Ingram when he wasn't on the Lakers. Also where people well. think that people talk these guys up specifically because they're on the Lakers, and it helps. The media is going to talk about you if you're on the Lakers. But these guys are genuinely good players who thrive in winning situations and Austin Reeves is helping to build a winning situation. So I'm really excited to see what he looks like in the regular season this year. I wouldn't trade him for James. I wouldn't trade him one to one for James Harden right now, because I think it yeah. doesn't make sense. And my notes were Reeves, great hustle player can fit on any team <laughs> and he has a golf tan. Got to find out if he golfs. <laughs> That I'm man sure is does. a brutal golf tan. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I'm sure he does. He also probably just based on how white he is, going outside for a half hour with like a polo or something on or, or a button down, he's going to get the tan. <laughs> like he doesn't have your Italian skin. He doesn't have my Syrian skin. He's got like middle of Oklahoma. I am white all the way on down. <laughs> pale ass, Larry Bird ass skin. I hated to do the uh, the trope of the white guy hustle player, but honestly, like he's yes. in a lot of spades. He gets a lot of rebounds. There's a lot of like tip balls that he ends up with, um, and then he kind of can do it all. He can move the ball in transition. If they need him to ISO, he can make a play. Um, he's a good guy. To, like he's definitely a versatile player, and you see that's why he gets a lot of playing time on that uh, on the FIBA team. Um, Anthony Edwards. He's also, uh, I guess, wildly we'll efficient. And you know, people call him a free throw merchant, but he's a free throw merchant in the way that guys used to be free throw merchants, where he goes into you actually guys. go and yeah, yeah, and he he gets a lot of and ones because of that because he's not avoiding contact. He's kind of he's he's similar to Kyrie while being very different from Kyrie. Whereas mm. like Kyrie avoids the contact because he really wants to make the bucket. Austin Reeves goes into the contact because he really wants to make the bucket. But both of them are far more focused on the bucket than they are on the free throws. Yeah. I agree. And I, I don't like that's not a bad kind of free throw merchant. I'm fine yeah. with I'm fine with those guys getting 10 free throws a game because that's 10 earned free throws. Even if you're doing the you know pump fake in the paint, Kyrie would do that a lot and kind of give some body. Yeah. Like he's still if he's still jumping out of his way to like try to finish and make a good shot out of it. Like he would do that a lot. And you're right. would go for the N one instead of going for just the free throws or hard. Yeah. it's like, uh, some of them are just brutal to watch. Cause he's so good when he finishes. I mean, Harden signature moves. Like I love his, uh, offhand free th or layup. So he'll like drive mm -hmm. to the right side, but then shoot with his right hand or left side, left hand. Like, just the versatility he has. He's one of the he best ambidextrous players that we've got yeah. in the league right now. The guy can go both directions with no issue. He can switch hands with no issue. He has burst or he had burst off of yes. both legs. Like for his all game. of his flaws, he is one of the most offensively talented guys we've ever seen. 
but the flaws are very real and the entertainment factor if you do not like that game is severely lacking and so just even though reach. he has good games yeah <laughs> people, are always, people are always gonna always gonna hate on that and i, I get it you know i understand why they would um, i don't know I'm, yeah. you know we'll talk about it more once once modi's here yeah we um, got he was the one who sent the uh, initial. I think he started the chat when the news started breaking. Of course, um, of course. he hates James Harden, <laughs> uh, and that's that's fine. You know, again, I understand it. I, I I get why somebody would be in that position. You know, but but when he plays well, I mean, just give him his dap, and that's that's all I really care about. Um, we are going to. I think I may have said this at the beginning of the show. We're gonna talk about the process next week. We're going to talk about tanking teams generally next week. I have an entire thing that I kind of want to do uh, where we go through probably the last 20, 30 years of tanking teams. And we, we look at uh, what kind of results we saw from them, you know, whether or not it worked, whether or not it didn't work, you know, who the GM was that was doing it. And obviously this sounds like it's going to take forever and ever. It's really not because there's only truthfully 15 to 20 teams to pick from. Yeah. Um, but we'll we'll talk about that next week. Cooper Flag. Let's talk about Cooper Flag a little bit. Yeah, Guy I, has has really came up on the, uh, came up on the scene for me with that Bradley Beal comment. But then I also sure. was looking him up on YouTube and kids. Have got you game. watched the highlights? Yeah, I mean Maine represent Maine, but like, shout out Maine. The kid is really good. I think. Um, I know part of my take commented it's going to be like the first white player picked first overall and like. 20 something years or something like that but like he has i mean he's got really good athleticism um he's got a good jump shot just polished game kind of looks like a um you know just one who was of those... the last first overall larry bird uh, no darko darko was two two yeah let's see uh, this would be a good at having elliot on the show as well oh my gosh i can't even think of who the last white player was somebody in the like 90s Steve I'm sure Nash wasn't Steve Nash was um, – article. Steve Nash was – Chet Holmgren has a chance, so that's old. Um, right, but yeah. then then he ended up not getting picked first. Yeah, let's see. Oh, man, I'm trying to think. I mean, yeah, I guess there, there's been guys who have been in the argument. Um, <laughs> so I have – here we go. Um, Kent Benson in 1977 <laughs> – 45 was, years ago. Was Larry Bird not picked first? I think I thought Larry Bird Reddit. was picked in 78. It would have been Magic, right? No, Larry Bird were they, was picked were they the different year draft Magic. classes? So there's actually an entire thing with how the draft works now and why you have to no, declare. He was the sixth overall pick. Was he? Yeah. Okay, so Larry After Bird second was year picked. Indiana State, but then he said he elected to stay in then college he and returned in the 78-79 season. But he was okay, so maybe maybe pick. that's why I thought he was first because I think if he had gone, it would have been between him and Magic. So technically, yeah. despite the fact that I think they either started that they started the same year, Larry Bird is older than Magic, and he mm-hmm. was technically picked before him and then went back to school. Because you used to be able to declare, get picked by a team, and then go back to college, yeah, while still a... being technically draft eligible for that team. Mm-hmm. So things have changed a lot in 35 years. Yeah, college is not that important. I feel like if you get drafted, you're playing pro right away. Maybe Actually, I guess it's a lot more than 35 years because we're almost 35, and we were born in '92. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> don't think about oh, the year right. that like Shrek came out. I don't like want that. to. I don't want to think of the year that anything. I don't want to think about the year that we debuted, dude. Like, yeah, we're so old. We're so very old. All right, uh, Cooper Flag though, not old guy. Guy, I mean, like he's 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 in that point forward uh, realm. He's got. I I don't want to give too much hype to it. He's got a little bit of LeBron to his game. You know, he he. I don't want to compare him to another one ninety five. I don't want to compare him to another white player, but he's got a little bit of Utah Gordon Hayward to his game. Yeah. Where he's kind of got a lot of like nice, uh, crafty moves under and away from the basket. He's super athletic for his age. I think he's going to be really like defensively. He um, was really aggressive yeah. too on that side of the ball. I'm curious because, yeah, he like reclassified to get drafted in 2024. Because I guess there are some really good players coming out in 2025, too, which I got to do some research on. Carlos Boozer's son. 
Oh, that's right. Yeah, he's Carlos. Crazy, so right? that's a lot of people think part of the reason that Cooper Flag declared for a year earlier is because the major competition, based on kind of how they're rated right now, was mm-hmm. going to be between Carlos Boozer's kid and between Cooper Flag. So basically, they're kind of skipping the competition entirely. Which it would have been really cool if we did have a bird magic situation between uh, Carl. I, I can't. I don't know his name. I think we'll just say Boozer. Yeah. We'll say Booz and 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 Flag. But I mean, I kind of wish that was happening. I think that'd be so cool for the league to have two top towns, one of whom's the son of an NBA player, a good NBA player, come out at the same time. It's Cameron and uh, Caden Boozer. But, I think I think Cameron is the older of the two. Okay. I think he's like I think he's 18 now. They're twins actually, I think. Are they? Oh, all right. Oh, uh, actually I did see that. Is the other one like a late lotto thing? I think he's not as good. It's not like the Thompson twins. Where they were both yeah, really. I where think they were literally back to back picks. Yeah, there's one. And they were picks. not only were they back to, but they were on the mock drafts. As back to back, like no matter what, every mock draft had him as like five and six or six and seven or seven and eight, which is fucking incredible yeah. that they're both so good. And I forgot which one they were saying is like the not as good one. I don't know if it's the one on the Rockets because the Pistons had the earlier pick, right? I think so. Um, but a I'm lot man, of the comments. I think on men is the sl- well, they're dip. They're good at different stuff. But I, I heard that it's like a lot of people that were commenting. It's like. Just wait till the Thompson brothers don't have to play together. Like you'll see sure. both of their skill sets just really come out. And I mean, watching a little bit uh, summer league, you could see like the athleticism right off the bat. I think it's uh, in place for the Rockets. We saw oh, that with God. the 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 Morris twins. Get a the, steal you know, and we like to call them. Yeah, I'm in. We like Thompson to call them the Mori. The and then because uh, Marcus Morris was better coming into the league, and then there was a few years where Markeith was better. And then I feel like recently Marcus, like towards towards the end of both of them being in their primes, they're both obviously like basically washed at this point. But for like the last few years of their like athletic peaks, Marcus was the better one again because he had the better like bully ball game. He developed his handling a little bit better. His passing was a little bit better. He controlled his temper a little bit better than Markeef. It's I mean, like it, it must be nice to have literally a clone of yourself to practice against every single day if you want to be an athlete yeah and if you're both elite athletes that helps yeah yeah it would suck if, if one of you was like you look exactly <laughs> the same but one of you fucking can't do shit <laughs> like uh like uh, arnold schwarzenegger and danny devito <laughs> twins <laughs> yeah <laughs> that would be tough obviously you want to be the danny devito like that's yeah that's that a much clear win <laughs> yeah yeah we all agree on that I don't see Arnold Schwarzenegger acting in 16 seasons of Always Sunny. Do you? I don't, but I think they're both right. so rich. So that is, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> I would guess Arnold is probably the richer of the two. Governator. But if 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 Danny runs for governor of California, like I'm going to vote for him. If I had a vote in California, I would, because I know that he likes uh, my boy Bernie. He does. Yeah, he's very, very progressive. Um, yeah, well – you know, to, to circle back to the Cooper flag thing, I'm excited to see it. Uh, they haven't announced yet. I mean, he hasn't announced yet, I guess, where he's going to try and go. A lot of people are saying Duke. Duke. <laughs> some people some people do think it could be the Ignite, though. Where do you want him to go? The Ignite. Yeah. G yeah. Would be I, really cool. Would it, would it be cool to watch him in college? Yes. In terms of putting him in a pro- professional environment where I think he's going to get better quicker, I, I, I always think guys are going to get better playing against pros and playing in a pro environment. Yeah. So whether it's Europe, whether it's South America, whether it's Asia, whether it's Australia, whether it's the Ignite, in very rare circumstances, would I say college is better for you than a pro environment? And it's you kind of get rid of the argument where it's like, oh, come to this school, we'll get you ready for the league. Or you could just yeah. go to a league that gets you ready for the league. Like it just makes and get paid to do it. Um, I mean, the two guys that just got drafted, one in, or I guess one in three, uh, because Brandon Miller was uh, in college. Mm-hmm. But for the longest time this this past season, and truthfully on talent, the one and two guys, 
are Wemby and they're Scoot. And they're both guys who came from pro leagues. They didn't play college. Yeah. yeah. And and with conferences changing and just the way that college sports are changing, I think a lot of guys are probably I mean, granted, you can make more like over the like you can make visible <laughs> money now really with the NIL player. deals. Yeah. But like for basketball, where you know it's only gonna be for a year, you might as well go to the Ignite because you can sign a you can sign a deal regardless. Yeah. And I think like the aims of that, like you said, just to develop literally for a pro team to take you and for you to come out because that growing pains from your rookie season could already be gone with the ignite or with it just in the G league in general. I'm with you yeah. there. You're, you're, you're getting, you're like, you're a, a lot of guys hit that like end of rookie year wall. And a lot of them hit that sophomore wall. Cause they're not adjusted to playing against guys who have also played pro ball. Mm-hmm. You can kind of mitigate that a little bit if you go and you play for the Ignite because you're traveling differently, you're training differently. There's no expectation of going to classes. Uh, not that there really is. <laughs> well, the I, don't NCAA. Hate, I don't want to hate him before he gets in the league. Like, don't go to Duke. Duke sucks. Particularly as a white guy. <laughs> it's like, just not a you're, good look. you're playing into too many. <laughs> and I know, like, this really hasn't been the case that much recently. <laughs> like, I guess Grace and Allen, JJ Reddick, but like, Duke is not renowned for their white like lotto picks anymore, but don't be the guy to bring that back. Like no <laughs> one wants that. No one wants you to go to Duke. Then I'll probably get Coach K's not even the there Celtics anymore. somehow. And, like that's the that's the other thing. Coach K is not at Duke anymore, so like you can't make the yeah. Coach K argument. Or excuse me, Mister K. I'm not going to call him Coach K anymore. <laughs> Jackass, get over yourself, man. You're not a fucking doctor, <laughs> Mister. Um, Sounds like yeah. a terrible cereal. <laughs> It might be a terrible cereal. <laughs> That's special K. Never mind. I was <laughs> I like, say, I was like, Mr. K sounds like the like off-brand yeah. giant version that you see. You know what? You know what Mr. K is? You get a little special K, you pour some Mr. Pib in it, and then you have uh, the worst night of your life. That sounds that awful. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to try that. If we were still in our like teens or twenties, I would try that literally the minute we get off this. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do it to myself. I just got back from Mexico. I don't need more things going on in my body in terms of, uh, tumultuous changes. You know, go back to the normal, get some Taco Bell, reset your equilibrium, and then you can figure out something else. Sure. I will say, I feel great. I no no issues coming back from Mexico for me. I drank bottled water the entire time. I didn't really drink any ice. Uh, I stayed <laughs> hydrated even when I was blackout drunk. There I'm an go. adult. Yeah. Yeah. Although I, I will say I, I was absolutely blackout drunk one of the days. <laughs> I haven't blacked out in a long time. Yeah. I'm trying to remember the last time I even browned out. I don't know. I just find myself going to sleep, like actually sleep instead of just my brain going to sleep and my body staying up. I just take it's hard. Out. It's like literally hard once you've been drinking for like 10 or 15 years to genuinely black out. I mean, I'm sure at some point it'll circle back. And as we get older, it'll become easier again, but like yeah. certain stimulants I stay away from now too. Sure. 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 Yeah. <laughs> let's just say certain stimulants. Yeah. Unless you're crushing shots and like mixed drinks and stuff, like a lot back to back very quickly. I, 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 I don't know the last time I blacked out until this past weekend, but it was because I was crushing tequila <laughs> shots, shots because we were on a boat and they were already paid for. Oh, hell yeah. That's the way to do it. And people kept being like, Hey, I'm not going to drink my shot. And I was like, I got it. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> they were like, man, Griffin, you... Once you start, you don't stop. Had a lot of shots. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, man, I feel great. And then... Well, you were hanging out I didn't feel ins, anything. Right? Not like adult youngins. Not it was like mixed. Young it was youngins. mixed. It was yeah. honestly... It was the youngest people with us were 20. And mm-hmm. it was... Uh, so we were there for anybody watching or listening. We were there for a, a bachelor, bachelorette party. The youngest people with us were 20 because they were the siblings of uh, the woman getting married. And then the oldest people that were there were 34 35 so i was like firmly in the middle nice yeah not a bad spot to be in it was good yeah and a bunch of a bunch of guys that went to uh, university of florida so i got to talk to them about my sister's gators a whole lot um aaron hernandez we did talk about aaron hernandez (laughs) yeah we talked about tim tebow we talked about those fucking bomb ass late 2000s gators teams uh for basketball Yeah, with uh, Yoki Noah, Noah and, yeah. and Al Horford and those guys and how they <laughs> ran it back. Uh, we, we could talk about this off pod. We don't, we, don't we don't need to do this for the give and go audience. Um, 
Is there anything else that you want to touch on before we get out of here? We'll be back, obviously, same time, same station next week. But I guess I can rattle off my notes for uh, USA versus Spain real quick. Yeah, Very let's quick. do that. Yeah, I want to. I, I I didn't get a chance to watch it. Do you know if it's on? They so put on, those on League Pass. Would I be able to watch it somewhere? I have to check my League Pass. Um, but I was just looking at YouTube, just fifteen okay. minute highlight like videos where they break down sure. the game. So. USA Spain Nets future looks bright because Bridges and Cam Johnson are playing well. Sure. So that's just something sure. I got. Sure. Jalen Brunson oh. is a beast. Yeah. He is so good. He runs point. Saying no surprise, him and Luca dominate FIBA. The Slovenia game was disappointing because Luca wasn't playing. Halliburton pickpocket merchant. That dude is getting so many steals. He's got like such long arms and was just constantly disrupting plays. And Anthony Edwards is insane, took over in the fourth. He, out of anybody on the team right now, like, and there's a lot of talent on there, just, like, watching all the players. I'm like, they should run through this tournament, no problem. Anthony Edwards is the guy that stands out, like, every time. When they need, like, a bucket or a big momentum play, I'm like, who is that? And, like, Anthony Edwards just pops off. Um, So I was actually talking – I was talking to Jared about him this morning because we were talking about how this team in particular – which is dope. It's just – it's just filled with dogs. Like, yeah. there's so many guys on this team who just who want to prove themselves and they want to win big games, and a lot of them haven't had a chance yet. I saw a, uh, excuse me, a workout video of one of the scrimmages, and Anthony Edwards went at Jaron Jackson, mm-hmm. and he like he basically dunked in his face, and rather than going up with him, Jaron Jackson just did like hand out and like backed up a little bit. Yeah, and Anthony Edwards yells, "Jump! Weren't you Defensive Player of the Year?" <laughs> and it's like, dude, this guy's on your team, and you're so fucking Jimmy dogging Butler him in a bit. scrimmage that's on <laughs> video. And like, I love that mentality so much. Yeah. That's such a great mentality. He's gonna be such a monster. Like all these guys, like Kobe, LeBron, Wade, uh, Melo. All these guys always talked about how the international teams are where they learned how to win. And Kobe, yeah. obviously, a little bit earlier. But, like, LeBron learned how to win from that 2008 run, the Redeem team. Mm-hmm. All these guys learned how to win because of their time with other guys on that team that knew how to win and because of the coaches they had. I can't fucking wait to see how good these guys look when they come to get done with international play because I think a lot of it – I mean, like, we're so close to that crossover period of a bunch of stars retiring and, like, 21, 22, 23-year-olds ascend and 19-year-olds in Jason Tatum's case – ascending into <laughs> superstars in the league. I'm, I'm so excited. It's going to be so much fun. Yeah. I, even when I saw that Luca was not playing, I was like, I'm still going to watch these highlights. Cause it's just fun to watch the team play. Like they are really good. They're super stacked. I didn't even mention Brandon Ingram, who I made the joke where it was like, cause he just bricked a shot at one of the highlights. So it's like, Oh, we have KD. Oh no, we have KD at home and it's Brandon Ingram, but he did like, yeah. dominate. Um, I mean, we've been saying that for a long time. He's, yeah. he's he doesn't necessarily have the moves, but he's got the build, and he he like, did build up that mid range. Like yeah. he's got that lanky dribble that somehow ends up being a much tighter dribble than you think it would be. Brandon Ingram, monster dog. Can't wait to see him actually be healthy. I hope it happens this year. Yeah, and Jalen Brunson is a superstar. I think it honestly going from watching Harden highlights. To then watching the FIBA team, I was like, Jalen Brunson has a lot of James Harden in his game. And the way that he uses his body in the post, like, it's not just his moves. The lefty comparison, too, because he is lefty, but he's been working on his outside shot. And the way that he can penetrate in the paint, the way that he runs pick and rolls, but then will look to isolate the point guard and go down low and just get those easy buckets. Mark Cuban fumbled the fumbled it when he let him go like he did those mass teams would have been so good and he fucked it all up like not for the first time dude go back and yeah. look at the post 2011 like after they won the championship look at how much he fumbled that team they won yeah. a title they won like 60 games they beat the one seed they beat the heat they beat like, they crushed everybody and then mark cuban was like i don't need to bring all you guys back <laughs> what are you doing man like that's literally the shot. number one thing you have to do is bring everyone back. back. <laughs> you just had the most storied run in like NBA history of the past 40 years, and you don't want to bring it back? Come on. Yeah, they beat man. the Lakers, Spurs. Did they also beat the Suns or something like that? They beat and the like- Lakers. They beat um, the Thunder. 
at, with beat, uh, Katie Harden and Russ, and then they and, also and beat Russ, the Spurs. and they beat uh, no, they beat the um, Trailblazers. Uh, with uh, Brandon Roy, yeah, Brandon. Yeah, and in total, I think in total throughout those playoffs, if I remember correctly, they lost five games or four games because they swept the the Lakers. The Lakers were coming off of a title, and they swept them. Let's see. I got the Mavericks Blazers was the first round. Yeah, and, and they won. They won four one, I think. Yep, or it was four two. Four, and two. then the semis, you're right. They swapped them four zero, and then the mm-hmm. th- they, yeah, they beat the Thunder four one. Damn. Yeah, Thunder they need to learn that, how to win there. Yeah, very and soon after that, two. the Thunder were in the finals, and they crushed them. And just the redemption from the previous Heat, like Dwayne Wade, definitely put the team on his back. But looking back, one hundred percent took advantage of the free throw like stuff. Like he just. Sure shooting insane amount of free throws in that finals still had a ridiculous run. Like the way he got to the basket and in his third year from Marquette for for like six months that year, D Wade was the best player. Yeah. Yeah. He couldn't miss. He shot like 80% in the final. So who cares if he's getting all those free throws? Like that's insane. If if D Wade had healthy knees, like not only would there be an MVP on that we could assign to his name, but D Wade would probably be a top 15 all time player. Yeah. But he literally didn't have healthy knees coming out of college. Like he got his meniscus from both his meniscuses removed in college or something. Whichever I don't remember if it was the MCL or the meniscus, but he mm-hmm. had already had surgery on them before he was even in the league. Yeah. And so it was always like a ticking time bomb with D Wade. It's like when are the legs gonna go? Mm-hmm. And yeah, yeah, eventually was... they did. Fantastic run. Good uh yeah. Good doesn't get enough credit. Doesn't get basketball. enough credit for the Western Conference teams that the Mavs beat in 2011 before they took on the Heat. Because the Heat should have been like, yeah, they were favored. Great, super team. Go look at go look at the role players for that Heat team. Go look oh, at yeah. the way it was built. Looking back on it now, if you ignore the top three guys on the Heat, the Mavs are the better team. Mm. They are. They like. LeBron obviously is the reason they didn't win. Sure, fine, whatever. But it's not like the Mavs are a bad team the way people think they are. They were an incredible team. They and they rushed had guys everyone. that were like definitely on closer to their last legs, but not like in no means. They had done. Jason like, Kidd. Yeah, literally, I'm looking at and Jason Terry also played out of his mind that playoffs. Like he killed. They it. had a Tyson Chandler um, who was either about to or had just won, won Defensive Player of the Year. Like. We got to oh. stop as a group pretending like it wasn't a nasty ass team because it was. Yam Mahimi was on that team too. Yeah. Although I think he, he was. Got that's one that's minute. why he got like paid by other people because they thought that he was be able to become a starting center <laughs> and he wasn't. He, that's why he got paid by the Wizards. I'm going to say it. it the, I, got, say the people. Got, I mean the Wizards. He got a ring. <laughs> yep. He did get a ring. I think he was the only Wiz with a ring that one season. So. <laughs> That sucks. All right. Uh, anything else you want to touch on? You want to get out of here? I think I'm good. All right, man. Well, as always, it's been a pleasure chatting with you. Uh, if you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, uh, any other platform that you might be listening to us on, what's the Truth Social? Um, what's the conservative there. YouTube? Rumble? <laughs> if you're watching us on Rumble. I don't think you are because I imagine most people on Rumble probably not big fans of the NBA. But if you are watching us there, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you comment below. I don't know if Rumble has comments or subscriptions or likes. Let's pretend like it does. We will be back same time next week. As always, we are here 530 Pacific, 830 Eastern every Wednesday night. We will be back with more of the group next week. Uh, We're going to talk about tanking teams. We're going to talk about uh the process we're going to talk about what went wrong in philadelphia and after that we're going to start talking about fiba because the tournament will be here Tarantinos, have a great night cgq peace giving go show we out <laughs> <laughs>